Hello. I'm Franklin. Um, I work on infrastructure as, and, and as security at, at Stripe. Um, and I'm here today to talk a bit about building great security culture. Um, I think that se security is something that's on all of our minds these days. Um, it, it, it seems like every other week there's some new uh, critical vulnerability uh, or some situation where our personal data has been leaked or stolen or mishandled. Um, as, as, as more of the world comes online, it's critically important that we build products with security as a design con constraint. And so we'll talk a bit ab about this today. So at Stripe, our goal is to increase the GDP of the internet. Uh, we want to make it really easy to run businesses that are internet fir 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 first. Um, and that includes everything from getting incorporated to taking payments uh, and, and things like managing fraud. And so payments is a decent chunk of our business. Um, and I think that when we're dealing with money and people's livelihoods, it's the, the uh, security implications are maybe somewhat obvious. But I think that all of our companies and organizations have a responsibility to protect the data that we're, we're ultimately in, entrusted with. So building and maintaining trust is one of these challenges that, that we're going to address today. Um, scaling with growth is another one of them. Um, in startups and rapidly changing organizations, um, these are dynamic and sometimes chaotic places. Uh, the, the nature of the business, of the product, and the customers are, are changing pretty rapidly over time. And these are situations where the security function in a, in, in a company may not be well, well staffed. Um, it may be a team, it may be a loose collection of, of individuals, um, and they might not have the bandwidth to, to, to actually um, sort of um, help the, the entire company. Um, maybe your company ha has doubled in size over the last year. That's great because now you have twice the number of pe pe people who can ship things, uh, but that's also twice as many laptops that, that can get infected with malware. Culture won't solve these things on, on, on its own, uh, but if we encode our values and beliefs about security into our culture, it does give us a more consistent way of approaching problems. So we're gonna talk about three elements of security culture today. These are learning growth, empathy, and responsibility. So not everybody is a security expert, uh, but it is a skill that, that you can build up over time. We wanna build a space where people can ask questions, they can try things out, they, they can fail, in, 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 and uh, they can fail in, in a safe and supported way. Too often, security culture is implemented through fear and shame. Um, who here has been told that you should lock your laptop when you walk away from, from, from it? Is that, yeah, it's, it, it's good advice, it, especially if you're working in, in, in a public place. Very often, I've, I've seen a lot of organizations that try to implement this by shaming people who don't lock them, right? If, if, if you step away from, from, from your laptop for a, a, a minute or two, someone might come up and send an email to the entire com company. We don't want um, these types of cultural norms that shame people uh, for accidents. Brene Brown is a professor at, at the University of Houston who researches things like courage, shame, and empathy, and has found that shame causes one of two reactions. Either people tend to disengage or withdraw from uh, situations, or they tend to get aggressive and try to take control. We don't want either of these. We want people to come to work as their best and full selves and not be afraid or embarrassed or shamed for doing things. If someone accidentally clicks a phishing link, or if they run the wrong command in, 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 in production, or if they just leave their, lap, their uh, laptop unlocked, uh, we want these to be learning opportunities uh, so that we can change our processes, our tools. Uh, we don't want to institutionalize patterns where people are shamed for accidents or for doing what they think is, is the right thing at the time. So I think that one of the best parts of working in a diverse and dynamic organization is that there are going to be situations where people disagree about, about things. Maybe you're lucky enough to go through an acquisition and have to reconcile years worth of, uh, of uh, differing technical choices. Maybe you're about to go uh, through a regulatory audit and need to change a bunch of workflows on, uh, for, for different folks on a, a different teams. These are situations that we want to approach with, 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 with empathy um, and ultimately figure out what the best path forward is. 
there are some cases where security teams do need to speak in, in absolutes, right? Like, you must not use SSL v, v3. We know it's vulnerable. But these are relatively rare. Instead, we, we want to focus on, on empathy and try to understand where the other person is coming from so that we can ultimately mitigate whatever risks there, that there are and get to that uh, business goal. We want to build a culture where people come to the table focused on the problems so that we can build toward that, that shared future. I think that a big part of this is recognizing that if there are disagreements, it's often due to a divergence in the context that those people or, or those teams have. We, we, we want a culture that's uh, focused on bridging the broader organizational context with, with that of the individual team or person. And so lastly, uh, the, 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 the last element is responsibility. So security is an integral part of the design of systems, of processes, of features. Whether you're building a photo sharing app or an infrastructure tool, you can't bolt security on after the, um, after the fact. Um, and so it's incredibly important that everyone sees security as part of their job. D developers have the most context for the problems uh, uh, that, that they're trying to solve, the pain points that their users see. And so we want to build a culture where we trust and hold, de de hold developers responsible to make the right call uh, and, and, and trust that, the, that they'll ask for help when they need it. That said, I think that coming at it from an infrastructure or platform perspective, um, the hope is that over time we'll be able to make people's lives easier by building the right tools and abstractions so, so, so that they have to worry about fewer classes of, of security is issues over time. This might be things like libraries or systems that handle authentication or eliminating cross-site scripting. So I'm going to posit that um, of these three elements, without any one of them, we end up with a security culture where security is someone else's job, and that makes it incredibly difficult to build great, safe, and, and uh, secure products. All right, so how do we do this? Uh, we're gonna cover a couple of strategies for building a great security culture. And the first of these is, is focused on developing individuals. So nobody comes into the world as a fully formed expert in cryptography or reversing malware, uh, but it is something that you can learn and pick up over time. A, a lot of folks that I work with don't have a formal background in, in security. Some are self-taught, some have learned on the job. But there are a lot of people who are interested and uh, want to learn, 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 learn more. Especially in fast-growing organizations, there are lots of opportunities um, and, and uh, chances to, to, to grow. If you're working in an organization that has rigid structures, if you have teams, if those teams have headcount, if those managers are really pr protective of that headcount, um, there can be some friction in moving throughout the org and actually working on different types of projects. Rotations are a, great, are a great way to address this. This is when someone spends three or six months working on a different team, building context, developing some domain expertise, maybe building some, some relationships. Um, and it gives you a chance to kind of see things from a different angle. For folks that do a rotation on a security team, um, their job might involve things like helping with threat modeling, um, re re reviewing other teams' designs. It might be using a lot of the tooling and systems that, that, that security teams deal with on, on the day-to-day -day that they might not have access to because they have sensitive data or sensitive controls in them. Um, or it might be things like working on threat operations, right? Like what are the types of threats and attacks that the company is seeing on a day-to-day -day, day, day basis? How do you uh, diagnose a malware infection and get it, clean, 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 and get it cleaned up? So let's say that we have a few people on our teams that are interested in, in security and are, are building up so, some domain expertise. A common next step is to formalize this relationship between them and, and, and the broader security team. Um, se security advocates, or it's also known as security champions, uh, are a way to kind of deputize folks throughout the organization that have some security knowledge or interest and have them be the point, the point person on their team that that, that, that's responsible for the security of, their, of that team's designs um, and things like that. Uh, they can be dependent on to, to, to escalate larger questions back to, to the main security team. Um, and it's really helpful for high-touch pro pro projects that might be very security sensitive. 
So we've talked a bit about growing individuals um, into roles to help support their teams, to help bring a security mindset into day-to-day -day conversations. But what can we do at the broader organizational level? We're going to focus on this idea of building a culture of learning. Um, one of the most important things is that we need to emphasize that learning is part of the job. And as leaders, we need to make space for, for it in our schedules. Uh, discussion and presentation forums, this is a fairly widely used concept, and it often comes up pretty organically. Um, they're usually in, informal. It might be things like a brown bag lunch. It might be people who, who, who uh, get together to talk about papers or books that, that they find interesting. Um, often these are not well supported by organizations, right? These, the, these might be self-organizing. Um, and it's an opportunity for um, if we want to build a learning culture uh, we should make sure that these are recognized um, and, and sort of in, in incentivized from the, the perspective of performance reviews and stuff like that. Um, so the second thing that I'm talking about here is uh, tabletops and game days. So any systems that we build have goals they have con con and they have constraints. They won't handle all types of situations uh, or in environmental changes. Uh, exercises like tabletops and game days are a great way to share context on a system to explore it and, and, and to see where it breaks. So tabletops are a um, exercise where you take a real scenario, such as uh, your base images have been compromised and they're leaking uh, sen sensitive information out, um, and you talk through a response, sort of in a Dungeons and Dragons style. Um, these, may, these systems may be com complex. They may involve human and technical factors. Um, th th these are also a really great opportunity uh, to bring in um, other teams and work cross-functionally. If, if you take an example, like uh, you've received a DDoS threat, right? Um, often companies will receive e e emails that say, please pay us 10 bitcoins, otherwise we will take your site down. Um, and working through these types of exercises helps to uh, build organizational, re organizational relationships um, as well as get through uh, what might be some uh, broken windows in um, your processes. Um, if you're bringing in teams like legal or, or regulatory, they can help with things like getting in touch with law enforcement or uh, any sort of like regulatory disclosures. Um, so to take tabletops a step further, uh, game days, which I think is a term that comes from Etsy, um, are essentially exercises where we take scenarios and then inject faults or take actions in production. You might kill your Redis instance, you might terminate your database master, and you kind of see, does the system react in the way that we, we expect it to? Do we get paged? Do the alerts go off? Um, these are great ways to help spin up new folks on a team and to help understand the limitations, the limits, and, and, and the edges of a system. Uh, th th this works very well for systems that are, se that are security focused as well because often uh, those systems have much uh, tighter, like better defined invariants. Um, and there are lots of great resources out, out there for how to run game days, uh, which I will link at the end. So a great opportunity for sharing knowledge is also when a project wraps up. People love reading about things that have shipped. It's really energizing to see forward progress in other parts of the organization. Um, and it's a valuable time not only to say what you've done, but also how you did it, what you learned. At Stripe, we have a couple of mailing lists called Shipped and Fixed uh, that everyone is subscribed to, where people send uh, updates on product launches, on bug fixes, on large deals we've, we've signed. Um, these, aren't entire, these aren't all te technical cha changes, but capture really the momentum of, of, of the company overall. Um, for security-focused ships, we try to focus a lot on, on talking about why we approached it in a cer cer certain way and why it's significant. Very often, infrastructure or security work can become in invisible. Often, if, if you do a migration well, nobody actually notices. Um, and so shipped emails are a great way to, to capture that, that impact. So our process for handling these has, has evolved a bit over time. Uh, we have some team-specific lists now. Um, 
when, like, a, as a company grows, it can be a little daunting to, to, to send an email to everybody that says, hey, I added a command line flag. Um, that makes our lives a, a little bit easier. Um, Team-specific team lists um, lower the bar and uh, basically capture a um, more, more targeted part of, of, of an audience. We, we've also found that writing shipped emails is a great design tool. So when you're in the process of scoping out a system or a process, um, it often helps to write a shipped email at that point to, to kind of help, to help crystallize both your goals as well as your expected Im Im impact. There have been a lot of situations where um, in, in, in the process of writing up a pre-shipped email, um, I've noticed at, at least that um, a design can be broken up into more incremental steps uh, that, are that, that are tighter scoped and sort of easier to uh, explain and, and, and talk about. So lastly on this topic of learning culture, um, there's a lot that's going on in our industry. It's, um, we, we have access to so many different types of perspectives uh, and, and things that people are doing at, or, at other or organizations. Um, over the last year, Stripe has been uh, building this magazine called Increment that is a print and, 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 a print and digital publication uh, that really focuses on how our industry builds and operates software at scale and especially some of the uh, human aspects. We had a recent issue on security, um, which I encourage you to check out. There are great articles on threat modeling or password cult culture and stuff like that. Um, I have a couple of print copies with me, so if you're interested, come and find me at the office hours. All right, so the last thing that I'd like to touch on is process. A, a lot of organizations have security review. Um, I think from the early days, Stripe has tried to always frame this as a collaborative and iterative process. Uh, it's not a judgment, it's not a tribunal, it's not some hurdle you have to clear, and there definitely shouldn't be anyone crying. Um, because we hold our teams responsible for the security of their products and their systems, the goal of security review is really to bridge that, that, that context and, and, and uh, see if they've missed anything. Our process for doing this has evolved a bit over time. Um, or originally, it might be uh, that you would sit down informally with someone from, from security and kind of talk through a problem. Uh, nowadays, we ask teams to send in a design document as, as a pre-read, and then we schedule 15 minutes to talk through any questions or follow-ups. This is very much the beginning of, of a conversation. Uh, we, we want to get involved with, 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 with security at the very beginning of a design so that we can make sure that we're asking the right types of questions and that we're ultimately solving the right problem. There are some cases where we do inject a bit more rigor if we're sharing data externally or if we're onboarding a new partner. Uh, it doesn't quite go through this process, but um, generally it, it, it works fairly well. Security reviews are also a really great place to invite less experienced members of your team to come and kind of see how the process works, to see the types of questions that the security team is, is interested in, um, and, and just to like help to get into that, that mindset. From the security side, um, it's really useful to do these reviews because it gives you a longitudinal, a longitudinal view of the types of problems that the organization is facing o overall. We've staffed numeral, uh, we, we've staffed numerous um, engineering projects that have been focused on things that, that we've discovered that are recurring issues. All right, great. Um, so that's pretty much all I have. Um, so to sum it up, we've talked about um, three elements of building great security culture. Those are responsibility, learning and growth, and empathy, and also some strategies for uh, doing this. Um, I think that ultimately, culture is only one piece of the puzzle. And we need to build it in conjunction with the technical systems and the controls uh, in order to build safe and, and secure systems. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's uh, how we build products is just as important as what we build. Uh, and so I encourage you to think a bit more about this next time that it comes up. And I hope you found this helpful and would love to hear any thoughts that, that you have. Thanks so much.